Welcome back to our Acting Analysis and Tips for Animators. And today I'm going to take a look at The Dark Knight. And I want to cover character mechanics, character relationships with the sets, pantomime, weight. There's a lot to cover in what is probably going to be a part one of The Dark Knight. That's right, part one, because I'm only covering the first five minutes and I have a bunch of stuff that I want to talk about. It's usually part of my uh, camera lecture, actually. But there's so many little acting bits and just mechanic bits and pantomime stuff I want to talk about. But again, this is there's a lot. And this movie, I love this movie. There's a lot of other stuff I want to talk about. So it probably will have to be a part two or three in the future. But before I start, you know the intro. And if you don't know the intro, this is why I'm having this intro. Hi, my name is JD, and I do acting analysis tips like these. I do animation analysis tips. I do animation lectures. I do rig reviews, product reviews, feedback clips. I I do all kinds of stuff. And if you're interested, feel free to browse around the channel. And if you like it, subscribe. And if you don't like it, you don't have to subscribe. You just kind of check it out and kind of keep watching until maybe you like it and then subscribe. I don't know. But that is it. That is the pitch. And let's get to the sequences. First up in all the awesomeness is body mechanics. So I want to look at this section through here as they land. This is to be very interesting. And often in my classes, the students ask, what should I do for a mechanics clip? And I like this here, the aspect of being in the air and the surface that's actually lower. So you got the combination of people hanging and you got that awesome asymmetry because it's going to be fairly tricky to stay balanced. And you got two different people for contrast, right? You already got a little post contrast there, but it's also they're in the air and they're landing on something that is somewhat uneven and slippery with all the little stones. And you can see this here as they land. So this person here landing in an offset pose has a bit of a struggle and you can see how he's probably going to fall forward, at least struggling. Then the other person is leaning so far back that slips here and potentially breaks the wrist here. Oh, but it's hard. It's a hard impact. You can see it here. You can add some more heavier, drastic oh, impact on the head. But this is to me is very interesting because again, you have air. So you're hanging onto something and then you have a drop. So that's another type of weight. And then you have impact on the ground, but the ground is not solid. It's kind of slippery. So there's a bunch of stuff in terms of bottom mechanics that you can do with this type of environment and surface. And again, something to think about, what is your character standing on, landing on? The property of the surface can give you a bunch of cool ideas for your animation. Second one is this. As those guys, those shady people come in here, they shoot, everybody's alarmed. You got the cop here in the back, he gets taken out, but the main thing I want to focus on is him. So if you watch him, he is deep in his thoughts somehow, right? He's looking at something, he's writing, he's, he's working, and that's his office. And he hears this and goes back. And what I love about that part is that as he goes back, he immediately pushes himself back on the rolling chair against the wall. So he also looks over, kind of guides the audience to the rest of this. But I like that he uses his environment to protect himself, to shield himself. If he would stay here and look around, there would be a higher chance for other people to see him because he's kind of exposed. But as he goes back, especially hearing that the noise is behind him, he goes against the wall and stays there to stay protected. So as always, I, if you watch my clips, you know I love props and sets and that the relationship that characters can have. And in his case, he uses that to his advantage. So if you do put a character in a set, it's not just, well, I have a set, I gotta put him in there. What else could you do with the set? How can the set drive the performance? How can the actor, in your case, you, take advantage of the set? Then as we progress here, it's all about weight. And actually a bunch of weight clips, this is clip number one. So the weight doesn't have to be like the classic thing that actually I did, where you have a box and your character, you know, squats down and lifts up the box. That's your classic box assignment. But in this case, you have weight with this character here, pulling this character towards him. Now, it's so heavy, there's such a pull that you can see this leg is actually getting off the ground. He uses this leg to stabilize, to push this way, and then pull this guy over. That's already an interesting sense of weight and showing this. There's a little bit of push off through here, but he can't do it too much because he's holding the gun. So it's a lot of pulling, you can see here, lifting of the leg. And then the other side of the, the weight equation is this character. So you have the struggle and the lift off here by being pulled, that's already a sense of weight. Then the interaction and the contact with this surface, the way he goes down here, slides on the surface and then drops. Because at this point, the character is done, leg goes back down, let's go of the character, and this is now your bouncing ball in a way, or your flower sack, or like your, your sack of meat here. Bam! 
hitting this. And once again, oh, this is just painful to watch your wrist. But then you got the impact here. You got the drag in the legs. This is here the impact. Bam, legs go down. So this is really cool in terms of just ideas for a weight assignment. It doesn't have to be just lifting your box. You have all of this. Bam. And actually, this finishes in something cool that I always kind of add in my lectures where it's neat to see this reaction goes over there and then she's in this reaction. And I like that just as a general idea where you can use this for all kinds of ways. And I think I've covered that before in a previous movie or previous TV show where you could have someone, you know, I think the example was a like a retail store. Maybe a customer comes in and the person working there, like the customer hasn't exposed the face yet. And the person working there hates their job. So they're super grumpy, sees the customer, and maybe the customer is facing us. And then as the customer turns around to face the employee, the wipe now reveals a very happy employee, kind of like, hi, I'm pretending to, you know, to like you and to like my job, even though I really hate it. I just like the idea of a wipe and what you could do in terms of just the character reveals. Well, like I said, there are more weight examples. This one is the swinging of a really heavy bag. And what I like about that part is the end of it. So you have this swing pivoting off of here. He puts that on his shoulder. So now the pivot is like this, but he's kind of done with the swing. And I know that he turns and he takes a step, but I like the idea of there's so much weight in this that the momentum continues, even though the body's now stopping, well, this bag, whatever weight you have here, is continuing because you can't just stop. And that weight, the turn of this, pivoting off of here, is going to now make the body turn, at least the upper body, because this is kind of connected, and to some degree also the root and the rest. So if you ignore that the character here is actually turning and taking a step, just think of if you are holding a really heavy bag and you swing it around, and all you're doing mechanics-wise is this. You're pointing this way, and you turn towards camera, but then your body stops and the bag continues, you're going to continue to turn because at one point the bag is going to overshoot and kind of drag, turn your body around. Just kind of think of those mechanics when you have something like this interacting with a character. And actually, again, part of this whole sequence is this. So here's the second part. Again, not as heavy. Both legs are there. It takes a couple steps here. But it's the same idea of pulling and the character will fall. But the difference here is that she holds on to him. Oh, and it's this. It's the other interesting part of weight is that she falls. And now that weight is dragging him down. So the sudden pull, you can see the reaction in the head and the body. And how he goes down, she kind of, he doesn't kind of let go. She's kind of dragging him down. They both hold on, hold on to each other. I think this is an interesting display of weight as well, right? So you got the pull. You got the slide over, you got the fall. Interesting. So this time my dog opened the door, but then decided to come in. Okay, merci. Oui. And my little one helping me closing the door. Anyway, so going back to this, you have multiple examples of weight. You have a pull weight of him pulling her. You have the weight of her falling and then the weight of her then pulling this character down. Again, it's an interesting combination of weight display. And then I'm gonna go back to this character with just this action here. And you might think of, really? Just this, putting the glasses down. Yes, I love it. So why do I love this? This is his office. Yes, of course. But this goes back to having your character be an environment. And is this environment familiar or not? So because this is all his stuff, he's worked here probably a couple years, I'm going to assume. Anyway, he's familiar. He's very familiar with this. So in a normal situation, he would grab the glasses and just put them down anywhere. If you would talk to someone, a person is here, that's a great drawing here. Anyway, he would talk to this person. He could easily grab those glasses and just put them down without looking because he knows where things are. He's very familiar. You can blindly do things in environments because you have muscle memory. What he does though, is he grabs the glasses and then looks. Why does he look? Because he doesn't want to make a sound. He doesn't want to accidentally put it somewhere because maybe he's nervous and then the glasses fall down and they make a noise and then people know he's here. So he looks and decides, I'm going to put them here. But he still turns away to look at what is going on over there. But, but look at this. Turns the glasses. And what does he do? He puts down this side of his hand first, then puts down the glasses. 
I know I am massively reading into this and as with all of these analysis clips, I am probably talking out of my ASS, my whatever behind, and I'm probably looking into things and seeing things that are either not there or the actor did not intend. I don't care because I like this moment and I like my interpretation of it selfishly. And that's what I'm going to talk about because that's what I'm going to use in, you know, potential future clips on my own. So I love that he puts down the glasses with this first because skin contact to this is not going to be as loud. If he looks away and then puts down the glasses, there could be a situation where this connecting with this is going to make a noise he doesn't want to have. So putting this down first is the most quiet way. And then he puts down the glasses because he knows the hand is now on the table. It's safe for me to put down the glasses. <laughs> Mind blown. I know this is an insane interpretation of all of this, but I like it and I'm going to stick to it. And actually staying with this character is this moment, right? So you got this guy going crazy here, shooting, 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 turns around. We got this moment here and then bah, into that. So there are a bunch of stuff so here. I want to talk about something and here I want to talk about something. There's so much to do here. So why do I like this moment is because of the blink just this. So the couple awesome things of him grabbing something off screen, you don't quite know what is going on. And you have a specific look and blink. Again, I'm going to go back to this. But as he does this, you're wondering, what is he doing? And then you have a cool reveal of one, bam, goes down Two, the breaking of the glasses, Ta da! reveal, he has this weapon here. And then as we continue here, this is a cool, not in a way, a way to Simon, but a cool body mechanics thing of him pushing himself with a nice extended pose here ba -ba, into a slippery environment, which again is not seen too often in student shots where a character has more of an interaction with the environment. So this could be something slippery, something sticky, something slippery onto a carpet. So you can feel that bump. So just think, think about that as you start a shot and you want to do mechanics and you, you are putting your character in the environment. Again, surface property. How will your character interact with that? And is this something cool you could use in your shop? But going back to this. Why do I like this? It's because he closes his eyes here. One, two, it's already kind of closed. So that's one, two, three, four. It starts to open, but still four frames. And then we can see an opening and then he opens his eyes slowly with an ease in. So why is this, at least to me, important? Four frames instead of a quick blink of one frame. It's because with this, to me, he sounds, or sounds, he looks relaxed. He looks confident. He doesn't look stressed. And this is only because I'm annoying my students all the time about every single frame counts. So if you're blinking, if I'm turning around and there's something crazy happening and I'm going like this, that's fairly alert. You can go like this and you might be really nervous and, and processing a bunch of stuff. But if there's crazy action, you're going like this. That's either you don't care you're not bothered by it. You're fairly confident about what you're going to do. So even down to blinks as an animator, you have to think about every single frame. Do I blink for one frame, two frames, three or four? And what does that mean? How will my character come across and how will the audience interpret that? And the conclusion of the sequence is this here. So as he continues to shoot this guy, there are a couple of things. A, I like because of the mask, he has really exaggerated looks. If you watch this here, looks around. Then you have this moment when we get back to it. But let's go back to the mask. And you have this here. He asks him something and look at how he looks at him, looks up to think, decides and says yes. Like it's very exaggerated because of the mask. And this is kind of cool. I like this. It's very animated in a way. And you can also use this maybe as a shot. This character does not have a mask. You can do profile lip sync. And now you have a character with a mask. And just think about that. How do you really communicate without the help of eyes? There are no darts. There's nothing in the mouth. A static face. And it's all about body language in terms of what the head is doing. I think that's kind of cool. Going back though, is the beginning here. So as he shoots him and he misses, there's this moment. Ah, he does this. This goes to me in the category of pantomime. A lot of times when animators do pantomime, they basically have a character and it's kind of like a closed mouth situation all the time where there's, you know, whatever ground, the character does something, pantomimes around and that's it. Definitely some movement in here and some facial expressions, but you rarely see yeah, a character doing this, actually having, not saying words, but it could be grunting, it could be yelling, it could be something in terms of frustration, going, ah, doesn't have to have sound. You can still go big with your emotion, including a yell for something that has no sound. Or 
you do add sound. So your lip sync doesn't always have to be words. It could also be, and again, it wouldn't be exactly lip sync, but it would be using sounds. And you can use yells and grunts and coughs and all kinds of stuff. I think you can expand kind of the horizon of a pantomime shot and a lip sync shot. And I love this. I love this idea of him going, ah, just being frustrated because he can't hit him. Then as we go forward, you looked at this here. This is just a quick moment because of contrast. He's leaning this way. And then he goes, yeah, you know what you're dealing with? Your friends are dead. That's what he says here. And I love that he goes from this angle to this angle. Just a, little, a last little contrast moment. And he doesn't do it exactly on the beat of him saying the word. It's kind of in between. I know it's a, it's a small little thing, but to me, this is very animator friendly of just movement using depth of the scene. It's cool in terms of mechanics, right? You can see full body mechanics and ending up closer for more facial acting. To me, this is a really cool shot in terms of structuring, in terms of what you can show off. Mechanics, and then lip sync, and a nice little contrast moment at the end. It's really, really cool. Anyway, we got to this here, and then we have this moment here. He shoots, he's out, and then he shoots him here. And I'm gonna show you this. It's the moment of when he falls, and the Joker does this. Why? Because it's such a simple thing in terms of animation. So imagine your character did this, or did this to another character, right? And this is your character. So imagine it was something good or bad. In this case, let's go with something bad. This guy shot this guy. This is a horrible act. Now, if he just does this, that's already bad enough. He looks at him, basically watching him die. But then if you do this, it's almost like you're studying. Like, oh, I'm curious. That's interesting. This person is in pain. This person is suffering. How cruel. And depending on you know how vicious this is and to whom this is done to, it could be you know old person, uh, a kid. This would be even more cruel to watch. In terms of animation, it's just a rotation. It's just a rotate over. Yes, of course you're gonna have influence on the neck and the chest and blah 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 blah. But technically, it's just a head tilt. But in terms of the character, what the character does here in terms of, oh interesting, I'm interested in your suffering. That's just a crazy thing then to watch and then to see the personality and the character of this character just because of a head tilt. Just like with the blink, to me, it's a simple thing in animation, but it can have a huge impact on the audience or a huge revelation of how we get to know a character. So to summarize, everything is important. Of course it is. But every single move, the timing, the repetition of a move or not, the lack of it, the eye line, the blinking, the head tilt, just everything as an animator, you're so in charge of everything clearly over every frame. Just be mindful of that. I know when you start animating, you are concerned about the mechanics and the timing and the weight and the space and all that stuff. But once you're kind of done with this, you're never really done, but you mean like you have a good understanding of it. Really think about it now. Okay, okay, I can put the mechanics to rest. I'm now in stage two where I'm really thinking about well, what does that mean? I'm successful in having a character stand up or sit down or, or have like an arm gesture, maybe not this one or this one or a head turn. Cool, I can do this and it's animated well, smoothly or whatever, whatever style that you're animating to or with or whatever. But now it's the next step of, okay, I, I have this arm move, but what's the difference between quick and slow and like this or not or staring or looking all of those combinations will tell us something about the character it's just that extra new step as an animator that's just really exciting and i hope that you are in that stage or close to that stage because to me this is kind of where the meat is of i'm done with kind of you know fretting about the mechanics and the difficulties of that now i can really look at intent and the specificity of a character's movement and how that impacts the audience and how we see a character that to me is really exciting and speaking of excitement uh if this this is exciting to you and uh, you would like me to help you with your exciting shots, you know the drill. I have workshops you can sign up at any time. Link in the description with all the information. I can try to help you as best as I can. It would be really cool. So let me know that is something you're um, considering. And speaking of considering, it's very considerate of you of spending all this time. I don't know, those segues are getting kind of crazy. But anyway, this is the end, meaning time, meaning thank you. Thank you for putting in the time into this clip. You're still watching. Thank you so much. And that is that. And if you like this and you haven't subscribed yet after my first pitch, here's my second pitch. If you like this, and you don't want to miss any of my uploads, hit subscribe and hit that bell button. You know it. It's YouTube. It's the pitch. It's what people say. I say it, but it helps my channel grow. So I'm going to keep saying it. And that is that. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you in my next upload.